So, Jim, despite all of those measures that, that you uh, have taken yourself and, and have been leading on, if we did get a more pro-environment, a uh, more green president, uh, would that be bad for Dow if people then were forced to use, say, less plastics, even if, as, as you're saying, uh, you've already got your own measures that are, are trying to uh, embrace uh, environmentally friendly practices? Well, regardless of the way the election comes out, we're prepared. And, and so I would just use Europe uh, as a talking point. In Europe, you have a very progressive uh, EU green deal that's out there today that's driving to the next level. In some ways, uh, it is going to put more cost on society. Uh, and the consumer is going to pay more for circular plastics. I mean, one of the things about a free capital market is we're making product today the most efficient way that we can. So, so that is going to happen. But there's also a cost of not closing that loop. So we have to be prepared for that. And I think what we are working on is how do you come up with a business model that incentivizes the capital markets to come in and help you close that loop? It can't just be on the basis of a linear economy that we've got today. It's got to be something that puts a value on that recycled material and gets it back into the, into the feed stream. Globally, Jim, did you expect COVID-19 pandemic to have any permanent or, or lasting impact to the chemical supply chain? I, th I don't know that COVID will have a lasting impact on chemical supply chain. I, I believe that we're seeing other things that are having uh, a bigger impact. Uh, geopolitical relationships are having a bigger impact. I do think we're making good progress on COVID through testing, through better treatments, and I'm optimistic that we will get to a vaccine. So, you know, relative to the previous topic, I think COVID is a short-term topic, whereas plastic waste and carbon neutrality is a longer-term topic, and you can't take your eye off that longer-term target while you're trying to deal with a virus situation, which I'm, I'm confident the scientists and the pharma companies will help us get under control. Jim, uh, I just wanted to dive a little bit in, in the strength in construction. Um, clearly, that's been mainly driven by residential. Do you think that it can't really get much better than it is at the moment? Or is it possible, is it your expectation that commercial construction could pick up at uh, some point in the next year to uh, overall boost the levels you're seeing? Well, as, <clears throat> as you indicated, Wilfred, commercial construction has been relatively slow. I mean, we're seeing people complete commercial projects that were already underway going into the pandemic. The new projects have been a little bit slow uh, on the uptick, but the move towards uh, residential home sales and residential construction has been good, and the move to do it yourself, and uh, we've seen strongest do it yourself numbers for projects at home that we've seen in the last decade. That seems to be pretty robust, and I think with low interest rates, as the Fed has signaled for the next two to three years, I think you're going to continue to see people look at that. I don't know what's going to happen as we get kind of post-COVID, whether some of the trends we're seeing short-term in terms of people saying, I don't want to necessarily go back into the cities and, and, and large um, apartment complexes or condominium buildings, I don't know how long-term that's going to be. We have to keep an eye on that. It's going to take a while, I think, for that to develop and for us to get a long-term sense of that. You kind of gave us a good picture across some of the businesses. Jim, just, just wrap it all up. <clears throat> How long do you think it will take to recover back, back to the growth rate pre-pandemic for Dow and, and some of its end markets that you're seeing? I think around the consumer markets, uh, the end of this year, beginning of next year, we're going to see year-over-year -year growth. I think in the automobiles, construction, durable goods, and durable goods and construction, we may start to see some improvements into next year. Automobiles to get back to the levels that we were at in uh, 2019. 2018, you know, that might be two to three years down the road. And we've got to prepare ourselves for uh, a, a shift that's going to happen, I think. And that's one of the reasons we launched our new e-mobility platform this year was to get ourselves ready for this coming shift. And I think as you go through these changes, you always see a little bit of a step change uh, in the direction that the automobile production is going.